the PG 2025 results are officially out and I know a lot of you are heartbroken. You didn't get your dream rank. You've studied for hours, you've, you've revised multiple times, but when the time came for you to solve the MCQs, you ended up making silly mistakes or ended up getting confused or just second guess the answers in the MCQ and that has cost you your precious rank. And I know exactly how you're feeling right now because I've been there or even in a worse situation perhaps. Take a look at this. My NEET PG 2020 rank was 1,22,605. So after that, I started watching every topper's video, every motivational video, like how to prepare for NEET PG 2021, how to, you know, approach MCQs, how to, what's the best strategy. I've done this for months, but initially nothing seemed to be working for me. But in NEET PG 2021, my rank was 135. That is from a six digit rank to three digit rank. So what changed for me? What did I do? Did I copy any topper strategy or did I use some kind of tricks to boost my rank? Because see now, from now on, you're going to get hundreds of videos out there, hundreds of topper videos, topper interviews, motivational video, like how someone went from 80,000 rank to top 100. And by watching those videos, you may think, yes, it's possible for me as well. Let's copy this strategy. But keep in mind, each and every one of you is different. What has worked for that person may not work for you. You take a look at 10 topper videos and each and every one strategy will be different. One guy may say, I focus more on MCQs and another might say, I focus more on GTs. One might say, I made my own handwritten notes and another might say, printed notes were enough for me. So you need to figure out which of the strategies will work in favor for you. First thing you need to do is dive inside your mind. Figure out what is your strength first. Are you good at making notes or are, are you good at memorizing things? Do you grasp concepts quickly? So first thing you need to do is make a list of things you're good at and then use it to your advantage. Now you take a look at another topos video. He says, I focused more on GTs only and MCQs only. I didn't focus more on theory part. You try that as well, but you're not able to solve the MCQs without understanding the theory. So you get confused what strategy to apply and you end up giving up. So this is going to happen for you in the next couple of months. You try to apply hundreds of strategies, but everything kind of seems to fail for you. And you start feeling, I can't do this. Need PG is not for me. Let's give up. Why am I telling you this? Because whatever I'm saying, I've done it too. You feel like giving up. That was exactly what I had felt. I had tried each and every strategy because there was no one to guide me. I'm the first doctor in my family. So how did I make this happen? What worked for me? How did I achieve that drastic shift from a six digit rank to a three digit rank? What I did was analyze the 200 questions which were asked in every exam. And I categorized the MCQs into six kind of them. So let's dive deep and decode this MCQ solving skill I'm talking about. So these are your six types of questions which can be asked. Take a look at them and don't worry, I'll go in detail and explain each and every one of them and what should be your mindset what should what will be the examiner's mindset and how do you approach the mcqs for the upcoming exams so these are your first type of questions which are recall based or simple one-liners so these are more of a memory based and which are really easiest and also the questions where people make silly mistakes and which will cost them their ranks so take a look at this question which vitamin deficiency causes night blindness as simple as that right even a first year MBBS student will be able to answer this question. And if it was not an exam, you straight away would have marked vitamin A. But once you're in the exam hall and the exam stress is in your head, so your brain goes into overthinking. So this is a neat PG exam, right? How can an examiner ask such a simple question? Is he trying to trick me? Can vitamin D be an answer? Can vitamin D causes some kind of eye problems, right? Is it vitamin E or vitamin D? You start overthinking and start wasting time. If it was not an exam, you, you would have directly marked the answers, option A, vitamin A and moved on. But since this is neat PG exam, you are overstressing. You are conscious that if I make a mistake, I lose rank. How should your approach be to solve this question? See, the moment you look at a question, calm down. You need to think as an examiner now. The examiner wants to check you. Do you know the basics or not? That's it. So yes, I know the basics. Vitamin A causes night blindness. Click that option and move on. Just sim as simple as that. So now coming to the second kind of question which are conceptual or 
the question is where you apply your knowledge. Now take a look at this question. A 60 year old chronic smoker presents with painless hematuria. On cystoscopy, a growth is seen in the urinary bladder. Next best step. So once you see there's a, there's a growth in the bladder, best step, best step would be radical cystectomy. You mark it and come out. But the examiner wants to know whether you know the stepwise approach of a bladder tumor. So read the question carefully. He's asking you the next best step. So once you understand there's a bladder mass, the examiner wants to know your approach. How will you manage this patient? What, what is the first thing you'll do? You'll do an investigation, right? You'll do, you'll confirm the diagnosis. So the next best step would be to do a transurethral dissection of bladder tumor because you want to confirm the diagnosis first. And if it's a cancer, you need to stage it. Then go for the treatment part. So you need to prepare for these kind of questions where the examiner wants to test your conceptual knowledge, whether you're able to apply whatever you studied. And if you have just mugged up the topic, bladder tumor, you need to do radical cystectomy. You'll definitely get this question wrong because he wants to check whether you know the stepwise approach of a bladder tumor. Then the third type of questions are elimination based question. And these are your rank deciders. These questions are such kind of there where two options look similar to you. Or you may get stuck between two options, which one to choose. So take a look at this question. A child with nephrotic syndrome presents with edema and proteinuria. Which of the following is not a feature of nephrotic syndrome? So in this question, the examiner has already given you two options. That is edema and proteinuria. So option D is out of the question and option A is out of the question. Because hypoalbuminemia will cause edema. And now you need to choose between hyperlipidemia and hematuria. So these are the elimination type of questions where you'll already know beforehand what two options are wrong. And you will get stuck between the two options. And you need to choose the right one in this. So in this question, the answer is hematuria because hematuria is seen in nephritic syndrome and not nephrotic syndrome. So if you have studied the topic well, you can answer any kind of questions, any be it conceptual, be it memory based, be it elimination type. So make sure you understand the concept really better and not really mug up. The fourth type of questions are trap questions, which are all except which of the following is not or even double negative types. All of the following are not except. So a lot of you in the exam tension will miss that word, will miss that not or will miss that except. Your eye will always be on the timer. Time is running out. And in that stress, you forget to read the question properly. You just skim through the question and you miss a crucial word that is not. So take a look at this. All of the following are features of nephrotic syndrome except. So the same question now, the examiner has framed me in a different way now. But previously he had asked it as an elimination type. Now he is asking you as a trap question. All of the following are features of nephrotic syndrome except. So in a hurry, you forget to read the except. All of the following are features of nephrotic syndrome. And the first thing comes to your mind was proteinuria and you mark it and come out. But once you look carefully, he is asking you except. And you know the answer that is hematuria, right? It is not seen in nephrotic syndrome, it is seen in nephrotic syndrome. Look at another example. All of the following are not the causes of painful hematuria except. So, if you are not careful, you just look at the all of the following are not the causes of painful hematuria and you can, you will directly mark renal cell carcinoma and you miss the fact that this is a double negative question. So, what does this question actually mean is what are the cause of painful hematuria? Not the causes of painful hematuria except means it is a double negative. So, he is asking which of the following is a cause of painful hematuria and the answer is renal colic. So you need to be really careful when it comes to these kind of questions because missing a single word will cost you ranks in thousands. So the next time while reading a question, first thing I want you to do is take a look at this words like not, accept or take a look if both the words are in the question and figure out what exactly the examiner wants to know from the options. The fifth type of questions are long clinical scenarios. Take a look at this for example. A 25 year old woman presents with chills, fever, right flank pain and dysuria. On examination, fever 102 degree Fahrenheit, costo vertebral angle tenderness and in urine there is plenty of pus cells. The next best step. So in this question, the examiner wants you to first make a diagnosis, then answer the question. In the previous type which was a conceptual question the examiner has already given you the diagnosis and just wants to know whether you know the stepwise approach of this diagnosis. But here in a clinical scenario kind of questions, he first wants you to make a diagnosis and then go for the next best step. So here the patient has fever, chills, right flank pain along with costovertebral angle tenderness and plenty of pus cells in the urine. So all these clinical symptoms 
suggests that this is a case of acute pyelonephritis and the next best step would be to start our own IV antibiotics. Oral antibiotics won't work and you don't observe in these kind of cases and you do surgery only if IV antibiotics fail and as a next step in the management. So make sure you solve a lot of clinical kind of questions and make a diagnosis first and then go for the next step. And the six type of questions are image based. And these are the straightforward questions. You have seen an image and you answer the question. Like for example, identify the instrument given below. Is it Alice? Is it Babcock's? Is it Cocker's? Or is it Needle Holder? So if you have seen the images, this is a free marks for you. This is a Babcock's forceps. You straight away mark the answer. And you don't need a lot of knowledge for these kind of questions. And neither you need a lot of memory. This is not a recall based question. You see, You have seen an image, you know the image. That's it. So before going to the exam, you need to make sure you have revised all the important images, all the x-rays, all the instruments and all the histology slides or pathology slides because these are free marks and if you get these kind of questions wrong, you can't expect a good rank, right? So these are the six type of questions which are going to be asked in your PG. And once you figure out how to approach each type of question, everything feels like a cakewalk for you. And solving a GT now doesn't feel like a burden, it feels like a game now. Because you are anticipating the next question. What kind of question will be next? Will I get an image based question or will I get a clinical based question? So once you keep solving one question at a time, everything now will feel like a game. You will start conquering all the 200 MCQs in one go. So no matter how many times you have read the theory, no matter how many times you have revised, if you are not able to apply that in solving the MCQs, if you are not skillful enough to figure out what the examiner wants from you, you cannot get a good rank so buckle up my friends you will have to do some smart work because just sitting and reading the notes just sitting and completing the syllabus is gonna get you nowhere even if you are not completed all 19 subjects still you can get a good rank by approaching the questions in this way so if you are able to complete the entire syllabus and do multiple revisions then it's really better but if you have really less time like for the upcoming INICT there's just two and a half months left right so what do you need to do? You need to prepare a smart strategy. So what I want you to do is go through all the previous questions which have been asked in the INICT and make a list of all the topics which have been asked. Try solving multiple types of questions around the topic. Try solving a memory based questions. Try solving elimination type or try solving the clinical long clinical scenario type of question. So make sure you are confident around that topic and not just the MCQ because the next time he may ask the same question in a different style. The last time he might have asked a simple image based question on the topic and this time he is converting that into a long clinical vignette. When you are sitting in the exam, it's like the examiner is playing with your mind. So stay smart, don't let the examiner get on your nerve or let him trick you. So that's it for today. I hope this video helped you in some other way. So please share this to your friend who is also struggling with his rank and want, want to ace the next exam just like you. And please mention in the comments if you need more examples in a particular type of MCQ. So I'll make a video on it the next time.